Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are on site in Sioux Falls, South Dakota now. Very excited to be sitting down with Dr. Elizabeth Haig. We are going to be talking about mastering the MCAT and I'm super excited. Thank you for Yay, joining us. Thanks for inviting thanks for me. To the show. Yeah. And we have a lot to discuss and there's so much nuance to this, but then there's also a cool background that we're dealing with with mm -hmm. Elizabeth. She's an associate professor of biology at Northwestern College in, mm -hmm. Iowa, in Orange, Orange City, Iowa, yeah, yeah. and also a PhD at Northwestern University in Chicago prior to that in biology. Yeah. In developmental biology, yep. Developmental yep. biology and and so in the last four years as the project manager at ADAPT Prep, uh, preparation for the MCAT. Got it. Uh, and that is extremely important because so many people want to pursue being a doctor and we're how do we leverage the right sort of technologies to help people become doctors, make it a, our uh, people that have lower socioeconomic status, how do they Absolutely. enter into becoming a doctor? Yeah. How do we make it more accessible uh, with the degrees of freedom, enabling people to do what they want with their, with their time in their lives? And then also with the transition in 2015 mm -hmm. to the difference with adding psych and soch and the CARS, yeah. critical analysis and, and reasoning, reasoning skills. skills. Yeah, I'm impressed. So we got, yeah, thank you, thank you. We, got, we, got, we got a lot to talk about, very excited. So let's start with let's start with you. Um, let's talk about you know how did you become so fascinated with biology? Who were you when you were younger, and how did this oh, sort of come up? Yeah. Okay. This. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I liked I liked school overall. So I I loved my French classes. So growing up in Canada, we learned French. I went to a private school early on, and so that's kind of weird that I didn't go into more with that, but I didn't see the practical side of things, which sounds kind of maybe kind of silly, but um, loved history classes as well. I think in high school, I got the history award. I didn't get the biology award. I got the history the award. History award. Um, That's cool. But there was something achievement-based in science that really kind of fed my inner joy, if you will. And so when it came time to choosing a profession someday, you know, I thought, oh, maybe I'll be a doctor, a medical doctor when I'm, I'm done with college. So I went into college thinking I would be pre-med. Um, yeah, and, and that kind of spurred me on into a biology track. Took yeah. a totally different curve than pre-med for myself personally, but yeah. yeah. Now you get to help thousands of kids around the world. Yeah, yeah with, that's my goal. Yes, yeah. yes, with becoming uh, doctors. Now, and I, and I would like to clarify, is the, is, is, and we can get more into this later, but then is ADAPT Prep, is it also looking to figure out how to help people around the world? Outside the United yeah, States? Yeah, that's a good question. So the MCAT varies. Um, can, the Canadian MCAT and the American MCAT very similar but you go to Australia or you go to Europe and you're gonna get just a slightly different variety of mm -hmm. the MCAT I think there's one of theirs is called the maybe the GMAT even okay. um, but yeah absolutely would love to help globally and and especially individuals who um, you know don't have that money to pay for some of the bigger companies. I'll, I'll call them the big box stores for MCAT prep materials. Yes. And being able to afford that and to get the competitive edge that way. For those people who can't afford that, I would love to offer them this tool that, of course, in my opinion, which might be biased, but in my opinion is going to give um, just as much, if not more quality um, software to help them prepare for the MCAT. I, I want to give them access to this tool. Yeah. 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 Th so I want I'm excited to talk about the, the global side of this and the socioeconomic side of this soon mm -hmm. in further into the conversation. It's interesting that you, you know, when we first met and shout out to Garrett, thanks for introducing yeah. us. Um, yes, you shout <laughs> out. Now, now what's the, 
you know, when you, we first met, you said that you were most fascinated with teaching and that you loved when when the students would learn. Yeah. Um, and we, we started talking about like the difference between having knowledge just, you know, gained inside of you versus being able to actually teach other people that knowledge in relatable ways and get their perspective augmented. That's like yeah. really important intelligence to have. Yeah. So tell us about that because now it's been 12 yeah. years for you professing. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, even I know before when we were chatting about it, I didn't so much mention this yet, but there's always been this teaching vibe in me. So the way that I afforded to go to college was to be a lifeguard and a swimming lesson teacher. So that's, that's how I earned my mm -hmm. shekels for that. And so there was always this kind of teaching thread there. And then in graduate school, um, I mean, I got a 4.0 in graduate school, but my passion wasn't so much in acquiring the knowledge. I mean, I, I enjoyed that. It, the achiever in me loved it, but my, my joy was most abundant when I was a TA, a teaching assistant in yeah. graduate school. And so listening to that in me is, is really what made me decide, okay, yeah, I could be a research professor, but my joy comes from teaching others. So I'm gonna pursue more of a teaching professing role versus a research role. Um, and also this, this ability to realize, yeah, you can be really, really smart, but if you can't translate that to others, if you can't share your intelligence, oh, it, it, in my opinion, it decreases the value a little bit. Mm -hmm. If, if your, your knowledge isn't transferable, mm -hmm. Definitely. It, it loses some, some value. Yeah. yeah. Not to say that it's not valuable, but for me, the most value in my knowledge comes from sharing it with others. I guess that's one way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a couple things there. Um, the, the sort of first thing you touched on was this, uh, the, the translational, like the application of research uh, to sure. the world. Yeah. And that's becoming more and more critical through people that we interview that are scientists. Mm. They're like thirsty to have. And that's awesome. It's so yeah. important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And I mean, there's that problem solving, sorry to cut you off. But I want to hear what okay. you have to say about yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that problem solving and that investigation is fascinating. I, I'm not saying that I don't value that, but my passion wasn't there. I think my passion, I became the most alive when I was teaching others, transferring that knowledge. Um, but yeah, research is fascinating. There was, I don't know if you saw my Facebook page, um, there was just a case of a girl who, or a young woman who was able to regain sight because of gene therapy. Mm. And so there's so many useful science projects going on yeah. right now that it's, it's pretty fascinating to watch. And so my hope is, yeah, I, I probably won't ever, well, I won't create, say, a research project that will solve someone's you know, medical issues, but maybe I can play a part by helping people from a from a, a greater array from a more diverse population to cultivate their passion to pursue medicine some of them might even pursue research maybe md phd type students as well um, and and bring them to the table that normally wouldn't come to the table and and help them transfer their knowledge in ways that would be useful to a greater population yeah, yeah. I, I love thinking about what different cultures from around the world will bring to yeah. the global collective knowledge base once they have the full potential to bring their like their culture and heritage Absolutely. principles to specific fields that yeah. are emerging um so yeah so that translational was super important that you brought up and then um within this whole idea of 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 intelligence because we've yeah. now had uh this is just such a blessing that we after these billions of years of evolution mm -hmm. have this what's a pinnacle potentially of humans now taking stewardship of this planet sure and yeah. so now it's become what is that intelligence is that intelligence mm. if it's just baked within you mm. then okay but really being able to pass it on in relatable ways to augment other people's perspectives Absolutely. is so valuable to to the next generations to have them be better stewards and whatnot 
So yeah. I'm really happy that we that we chatted um, specifically about that as well. Um, I want to know because this is really important. We like asking this to people that are professing um, because when there's so much to gain from your experience over a dozen years of like what have been some of these key takeaways for you with teaching to students that mm. that you think would be really important to teach about right now mm. to teach about to other professors to, to, or to teach about oh, to that's people. A good question. yeah people watching um i would like to hear both um yeah to to just to a normal like audience of like this mm. is just this is what's been really interesting about um, about being a professor, okay. but also to potentially like yeah what can help other people become better mm. teachers as well. Sure. Yeah. 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 Great question. Um, and I think not enough people ask that question. You know, as as a new when I was a new professor, I tried to do a lot of reading of what does make a great professor, and there's not a ton out there. In fact, one of the first books I. I read or one of the first articles I read talked about well the really good teachers are so busy teaching that they're not writing articles about being good teachers oh that's interesting yeah, yeah. so it's awesome to have someone like you asking these questions now for for me personally what I've seen is if you anchor new knowledge to current knowledge that's the best way you're gonna mm. retain it and and when I'm when I'm saying that it, that's more like factual knowledge type of stuff it's not so much thinking out of the box being a creative you know new knowledge developer it's more okay how do you learn what's already out there mm -hmm. and with that with my students anyways if you anchor it to something they already know yeah. it's gonna make it more I don't know, it's worth, more connectable. Yep. Um, the, the example that pops into my head every year for microbiology that I teach, we learn about the lac operon. I'm going all science geeky on you, so hold What on. is that again? Yeah, the yeah. Lac so the, the lac operon, it's a series of genes within bacteria that help them process lactose uh -huh. as an energy source. Uh -huh. And so in our microbiology class, we look at that lac operon to say how does a cell, something as simple as a bacteria cell, know when to turn certain genes on and off. And I equated that to me wanting a Jeep someday hmm. and what the limiting factors are and what the promoting factors are in me attaining this Jeep someday. Mm -hmm. And so it would be, well, b incurring bills would be a limiting factor if I spend money on other things. Um, yeah, that yeah. would limit and thing, things like that. You know, this is usually like a 20-30 yeah. minute class, so I won't I won't yeah. go too much. But I see where you're going. Okay, yeah. so it's in so, order for the biological process to commence, you need certain certain things factors. present in the environment to make gene transcription happen. Yeah. 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 And Interesting. So, yeah, and, and that would be the same thing with you wanting to get a car, which is a very relatable example for students who are wanting to earn a vehicle or whatever it may yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or we can talk about enzymes and dating services. So. Oh, that's yeah. so cool. See, this is like yeah. this is good science communication practices. Fair like enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they can relate to or they understand. Okay, here are these two people that out in society they might come together and form this product of a couple. But if there's a dating service and they both are attracted to that dating service, it's going to be more likely that they find each other. And this, and again, this is right up the alley of you know 18 to 21 year olds and, and, and how does what that relate to enzymes? About. So how that relates to enzymes is that you know there's certain substrates or chemicals that can come together and um, form a different product. Mm -hmm. But the enzyme's presence is going to speed that reaction. Speed it it's going to make it more likely that those two substrates come together. It's a catalyzing form. agent. Exactly. Like the app is, is a catalyzing agent. Yeah, like the dating app yeah. would be a catalyzing agent. And that, they're like, oh yeah, we get that. We get that. That makes sense. Interesting. Yeah. I love these relatable oh science gosh. communications. There's, they're so good. Yeah. They're so good. There's so many of them. Okay, so that's a huge yeah. principle in teaching and professing yeah. is making things relatable to Absolutely. like to the generation where they're at currently. Yeah, and that gets um, tough, right? Um, so when I first started teaching at the college level, I was only 26, and I was more in that 
time frame with those students and now as I approach my 40s sometimes it's like oh well, I think this is really cool and my students are kind of like hmm yeah you know well here <laughs> yeah. are you because our yeah. grade is in your hands yeah. um, so to stay on top of that as well yeah. is, is kind of a cool thing so then do. it's interesting that a professor would then need to be keeping up with the newest technology trends yeah. and what the collegiate students are using in order to try and make the science Absolutely. relatable at the moment in yeah. time yeah yep yeah, like cool. what, what kind of things in, intrigue them, you know, right now, uh, I've got a 13 year old son and he loves Fortnite. Yep. And so when he's a college student someday, and I'm, I'm hoping my observations of Fortnite are gonna, you yeah. know, yeah. Come, come to value for me in some kind of connection. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's talk about MCAT. Sure. Because, you know, you, were, you taught me about this earlier and it was really interesting learning about this from you that in so first of all there's the AAMC MC, the Association it. of American Medical Colleges yeah yep. and they make them cat every year yeah okay and yep. then that and that's for just the United States and there's one for and, and for Canada, and Canada. It, as well yeah and then there's a differences for ones in Europe or Australia, yeah. or China, Asia, Middle East, whatever. Yeah. People have different that's, medical that's my understanding. entrances. Yeah. yeah, but they kind of follow similar, similar scientific principles of biology, chemistry, physics. Yeah. So, okay, now, now this is what got interesting is in 2015, there was this additional of cars. Yeah. So then a quarter of the test became cars, which is, again, critical, critical yeah. analysis, analysis. and reasoning skills. Reasoning yeah. skills. Yeah. And then, um, which is really important because that's basically like parsing information and taking key takeaways from it. And then psychology and sociology became a quarter of yeah. it. And then yeah. the other quarter is the biology, chemistry, physics stuff. The other half is yeah. that. Yeah. So, so then that gave ADAPT Prep now, where you're a PM at, that gave adapt prep kind of it's a new it's a, a, an ability to kind of come in there and yeah. say oh well now that there's a, this new addition we can come yeah. in there and and provide this assisted the software that assists with learning that is two hundred dollars versus like you were pointing at earlier yeah, the fifteen hundred dollar plus course yeah you got yeah, it yeah. yeah so now yeah tell us about like the the, the this mcat prep and you know your tag is you know mastering the MCAT, yeah. which is you know it's beautiful and it's again it's low cost, but you provide more than the high cost, so it's like it's hard to you know how do you get people to yeah how do you well and trust is such a big thing I think too like how how do you get people to believe hey this is a quality product even though it may not have that super big price tag of some of these other big box um, yeah. stores if you will. And you know, hopefully with time and students talking to other students to say, hey, this really does work, that's how it's gonna propagate um, among pre-med students. And you know, I've even seen a um, couple, there, there's a couple schools that we have arrangements with, I won't name drop just for, you know, I don't know if it's le legality issues or whatnot, but yeah. to, to hear back from them, yeah, our MCAT scores are increasing using this software and it's pretty cool that's and, awesome to yeah hear. yeah that's awesome yeah so it's it's having an impact yeah um and and that brings me joy too because there's nothing worse than doing something yeah. for me anyways than that's doing something not, that has no value uh, yeah, right that's about, yeah. <laughs> um yeah but so the the premise of all of this is that students are paying for their undergraduate college or classes right they're taking the physics class they're taking the chemistry classes the biochemistry classes and yet there's this mindset out there and i don't know if it's like a you know a marketing thing that has happened over the years where oh yeah you did all these college classes but now you have to take this other course and relearn everything mm. and i could see with with some of my colleagues they're like no we we do a good job in the classroom you, you shouldn't have to relearn everything and I, I would agree with them on that sense to kind of cultivate this idea of you don't have to relearn everything because that's not the best use of your time. Um, now, what is time? Mm -hmm. No, just kidding. Yeah, I would, yeah no, just I <laughs> we, love we, asking that we, question. I know you do. Yeah. We, we won't go there, but um, you know, the, the best use of their time is having had these college 
courses or these university courses and then instead of relearning everything, figure out what you learned well and figure out maybe what you didn't learn well. Maybe, you know, maybe it was because you didn't cover that in some of your classes or maybe you didn't learn it as well as you thought or retained it as well as you thought. And so that's where adapt prep comes in. And as a student takes practice exams, they can kind of assess, did I learn things well enough? Um, where, where am I weak or where did I learn things incorrectly, right? Yeah. Because you don't, you don't know that you don't know something yeah. until you get it wrong. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And so that's, that's where this comes alongside. And then instead of, you know, instead of reading this textbook and that you already know 80% of, you want to focus on that 20% that you don't know so well. And, and that's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck as far as investing time into MCAT preparations is review that 20% yes. or learn that 20% because you already know this. Why, yeah. why keep going over that? Yeah. Um, but that's where people are comfortable, right? I mean, I do it all the time yeah. too. It's, it's, I'm going to teach stuff in my classroom and put stuff on my syllabus that I'm really confident I know things about. And yeah. as, as someone prepping for the MCAT, you can't stay in your favorite areas totally because you're going to get this stuff on the test too. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a very valuable principle for life in general is mm. that Pareto principle of that, uh, especially for something like an MCAT that there, you, you have this sort of like 80% understanding of, of certain materials and that it feels good. And then yeah. this other 20%, you basically need to focus 80% of your time on the 20% of the material you, you don't it. know and then slowly work your way into having a more well-rounded. And so this is like yeah. the adaptable MCAT where you're, you're in a certain field of study like biology and you may not know certain things, so you're adapting the yeah. questions to become more and more difficult with them over Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So the, yeah, it's part of the basis of the software then. You take a, so there's four sections on the MCAT and you could start out just working on one section if you wanted to. Um, you take a full length exam, which is about 90 minutes, um, the MCAT in total is about a seven and a half hour exam. So it's, yeah. it's pretty crazy, but it's so crazy. Yeah. Um, so you can take, you can take a full length exam and, and we start you off relatively easy. And that's, that's something I, I, I still kind of question of maybe we need to start people off really difficult, but our scale of earned level. So the scale of difficulty is, is one to 10. And we give students an exam starting off at level three. Mm -hmm. And based on how they do on that first exam, the next exam they take will either be more challenging or less difficult. Yeah. Um, that way we can meet the student where they're at yep. and then help them go to where they need to be. Yeah. Yeah. And so that the software is going to adapt according to that level of difficulty for them. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that process of adapting, is, it's, a, it's a closed loop feedback system and that seems to be a huge aspect of, um, of, of the future in terms of technology mm -hmm. and adaptability of, of, of in information dissemination and knowledge gaining slowly building up over time. Yeah. So how, this, this is a big database, this is like 1,200 or so the, questions. Yeah, the, yeah. Cars, the car section has 1,200 questions in it um, and then we have about 1,200 in the chemistry, biochemistry section, or chemistry, physics, biochemistry, um, and then 1,000 each in biology, biochemistry, and psych and soch. And we're constantly working on, so one of my roles um, as project, I'm, I'm project manager, so trying to coordinate and, and disseminate that, this, that we exist, but my other role is a content writer. So we're constantly adding content to, the question bank, which is kind yeah. of fun. It keeps me learning. So I yeah. like that. Yeah. There's new, new and new and more new yep. to continue adding and making the yep. questions non-biased and non-leading and yep. all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and there's definitely a language of how AAMC writes their questions on the MCAT um, that sometimes, you know, someone who's writing for AAMC may not take as academic approach as maybe I would. And so that's been great for my own teaching experience to realize there's different ways to get at whether this person has this knowledge. 
and I might ask a question a certain way because that's been my training, whereas somebody else with slightly different training will ask, you know, it's getting to the same endpoint, but with a different question. Um, so, yeah. so for me, for me, not only am I working on developing this software content, but I'm also learning how to be a better teacher at the same time, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was a yeah. lot of babbling. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that right yeah. there. That was so good because it's that's so good. true. Is that that is a good way to become a better uh, at whatever you're doing in life is to be looking at the tip of the industry, yeah. uh, the cutting edge of the industry, and then bringing it into the uh, dissemination, the mm -hmm. best ways of disseminating. And that is, again, that's like storytelling. That's, um, you know, you have to decide on whether yeah. something is going to be a multiple choice or a short answer or a long answer, yeah. uh, written. That's all very difficult. Yeah. To, and that's to like know. life skills, right? So it's, it's beyond just the MCAT. It's, these, are, these are skills that these individuals will take into the rest of their life of, okay, I've got this knowledge, but in the classroom setting, I'm, I'm being asked the question in this way. In the medical setting, I'm probably gonna be asked in a different way, but still needing that knowledge. So can I decipher the way, or can I even anticipate the way I'm being asked, or even yeah. assess, hey, you're asking that different than when I was tested on it. Do I still know what you're talking about? And get the yes. right answer. Yeah, because yeah. there's, like, there's a big difference between knowing an answer to a question yeah, versus it. seeing the question and answer in a real life scenario and then yeah. needing to add some sort of knowledge from another domain to it or you know that's kind of the critical analysis and reasoning yep. that you have to do to make a decision yeah yeah you know you you see this piece of um writing that might not even be well probably it won't be from your field of expertise right yeah. it'll be from dance or history or or whatnot yeah. and you have to reason within the text and also reason beyond the text yeah and we want doctors to do that right totally because you're not going to have the typical textbook patient every time exactly and if you if if you have that patient or if i'm the patient and, and you know my doctor's like oh well you don't check all the boxes like in my textbook for this I don't, I don't want that kind of doctor. I want someone who can, okay, this and this, so maybe this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's at times there's a protocol, and then at right. times it's figuring out how to potentially do things off protocol that are yeah. actually much better for the scenario at hand. Yeah. And you want to be agile, but also be, be on protocol as needed as well. So it's kind of like... Yeah. It's adaptability right? adaptability yeah. <laughs> we, we had we had a um, dr robert lustig on our show and okay. um, he's a pediatric endocrinologist and mm. so when we're when we were talking to him he was he was very upset at how the physicians are now having this instead of doing eye to eye with patient it's like mm. eye on computer screen doing yeah. electronic medical record right. while yeah instead of the bonding yep. and so i'm curious to hear what your perspective is there and like what's yeah. going on with the mcat related to mm. electronic medical records and stuff yeah like that's that. a good right. question um so a couple of things there fortunately there's been some problem solving I think so there's been entrepreneurs that have come in and developed what's called a medical scribe so there's several different companies cool. across the u.s yeah we, that was what i told him by the way i was like we're yeah. we're going to just really quickly be able to enter in the audio into text and fill in the electronic sure or that record. too yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so one company that I'll, I'll give a shout out to M Modal. M Modal. M Modal is one of the cool. Scribe companies. Um, I think there's another one, Scribe, Scribe America or something, mm -hmm. um, where oftentimes there's there's students who will take a year off between undergrad and medical school or a couple years off, and they'll be a medical scribe. And what they do is they're the ones at the computer for these physicians. Now most of the hospitals that have medical scribes are typically the bigger hospitals so you're not probably going to see a scribe at a rural hospital but i think that's that's starting to solve that issue because i would agree if you're not looking at that person you're 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 losing a ton of 
communication. Yeah. Yeah. Emotional relatability. Yeah. Um, nonverbal cues. Nonverbal cues. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. And then, yeah. and then it's interesting. So then these companies that you were listing that are doing the scribe, that they're, 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 they're doing audio to text and then you have to look at the text afterward. Is that well, what they're doing no, right what now? they're actually doing is they're training individuals to sit in the hospital or the clinical room oh, with the doctor and parse for the key so points and write them down oh, oh they're, they're filling typing the they're doing the record. yes oh interesting yeah oh oh yeah. cool so so then the physician is having the one-on-one -on -one and the scribe is filling in the health you record it. you got it oh that's that's very interesting yeah oh. so that that that's kind of one of those things where someone had a great idea. That's a good solution. Yeah. That's a good yeah. solution. I also think that soon we'll be able to go directly from audio to text and have that text input, input yeah. into the health record. So it would be like a parser for the yeah. for the audio to text, which is basically what the scribe is doing. Yeah. They're yeah. the parser. Yeah. Yep. And then the doctor can go back and, make and, sure. and look at it afterwards yeah. to say, okay, did you really translate what I was saying? And then there's always this other, I mean, there's so many facets to to being in a in a clinical setting with a patient because then you wonder what's going to happen with insurance and liability cases right it's like well we've got your audio right here you know is that going to scare people away from the healthcare profession i don't know oh but yeah that's a, that's another that's a whole right other tangent right yeah oh man that's a really interesting point though is that yeah. we're approaching the end of privacy in many ways and yeah. so if i if that that is a hipaa compliant medical yeah. uh, safe zone and yeah. if that audio is now being leaked into wherever else Right. about my yeah health, or or does it make know. and so not only hipaa kind of privacy issues but does that make the physician even more um what's the word i'm looking for cautious in yeah. their treatments well, that's or in their diagnosis it's like then, oh my goodness is this going to come yeah. back and haunt me whoa yeah so there's a lot of whoa. there's a lot of things to then think the about and worry about becomes on on so uh, much pressure. Uh, they're on, on a lot of pressure yeah. and uh, everything becomes um, described, everything becomes written down what the, so yeah. everything's being analyzed on what they're recommending, how yeah. they're recommending it and what dosages, um, to what patients, to what, et cetera. Yeah. Like, you know, the, which protocols are they following for what? It's like yeah. that's starting to be interesting yeah. so, so you, you yeah, see a, sorry you see a good side to that right because yeah, totally as a patient i'm like oh yeah that's going to make me feel more confident because if this doctor screws up i've got record of it mm, um, that's right and and maybe hopefully you know going the more optimistic route this yeah. is going to allow or, or enable physicians to be more accountable right yeah because it's like I, I better be on my game every time because it's getting recorded Whereas exactly. if it's not, can I, you yeah. know, can I become a little less we're, cautious? We're seeing that exact same thing happening with police officers now mm -hmm. because the yeah, police officers yeah, are wearing yeah, cameras. Yep. Yeah. So That's now true. That you can't, um, yeah, can't uh, potentially be overly aggressive uh, and hurting people that are not committing crimes and whatnot and yeah. um, all this different type of stuff. Um, but shout out to all of the good police officers absolutely. and firefighters and, and, and physicians medical, and and physicians and yeah, yeah, that are, that are keeping good care of, of humanity. Um, I want to also follow up on that optimistic route with physicians and AIs uh, because I have, a, I have a strong feeling as well that potentially where we could go with the end of privacy could be a very mm -hmm. good place with transparency that mm -hmm. what about your biometrics really mm -hmm. needs to be, needs to stay hidden from the rest of, right. of, of humanity. Yeah. Because as long as all of these nodes of individuals that have all their biometrics are opened, um, the data si no data siloing is great, then we can have the best possible ways of treating um, sure. each other and making yeah. sure we stay in the best health possible. And also with physicians on the, their side is that um, them having total transparency with the way that they're um, prescribing certain um, remedies and yeah. whatnot <clears throat> and making diagnoses can then be more easily 
uh, data can be analyzed on those things and then we can see who's doing the best, why yeah. they're doing the best, yeah. how we can help other people do it better. Actually, yeah, yeah there's a lot like of Like more good. data, database treatment. Like, okay, yeah. the data really does show that this is this is happening well. I don't, have you watched the movie Gattaca? Yeah. 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 So it, it's starting to really yeah. sound like we're approaching this Gattaca <laughs> totally. reality. Yeah. Um, especially with gene sequencing and things like yes, that. And yes. so while we have these amazing tools that we're developing, I think it's always a good idea to take a step back once in a while and say, okay, yeah, this we're developing this to be used for good, but what's the bad that could be a consequence of this? And just to be careful yeah. about that, and then how do we ensure that that bad doesn't come to fruition? Um, that's right. Yeah, and so, but going back to the MCAT, that's where I'm excited that in 2015, there's now this psychology and sociology aspect yes. to the MCAT because it's, it's requiring pre-med students to have some background in psychology and sociology. You know, they didn't necessarily have to have any psych or soc going into med school years ago, but really that's, that's a big part of being a physician yes. is being able to understand beyond the physical, to be being able to understand the psychology that we maybe yeah. you know, don't necessarily have those litmus tests for. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge addition in 2015 Absolutely. that happened. I'm so happy that it did happen. Yeah. Um, and then the CARS, yes. analysis Crit and reasoning yep. skills. Yeah. Those additions were huge you, when you taught me about them i was like whoa that's great like that's a huge yeah. advancement in the right direction yeah and we'll see i mean i think there may be another one of those um advancements that happen into the mcat in the next couple of years with artificial intelligence yeah we, i don't know we It'd don't be know interesting yeah, and, yeah. Then, and then we'll have physicians l learning better about how machines learn and how machines can help yeah. with the uh, medical processes. Yeah. Right, right. Well, and that's kind of what our software does in a, yeah, in a way right. too. The AI that's built into our software, it's, you know, the students are hopefully learning from our software, but the software is also learning based on their performance yes. with our questions and adapting the question bank to the user, which is yep. pretty cool. That's, and that's one of the most crucial aspects about these closed loop adaptive technology platforms that, that, that exist that is, I think, catalyzing much more success in, in um, the dissemination of these complex mm -hmm. sciences and experiences to um, people that can go out and become their best in the field. Yeah. Yep. Now, let's talk a bit on SES and socioeconomic status mm -hmm. because yeah. this is so crucial. We, we were, were democratizing mm -hmm. the cost of these products down, 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 which is enabling more and more people to pursue I hope so, with yeah. economic freedom. Yep. Yeah, this is great because you're down to 200 now. Yep. That's the cost. Yep. yep. So fortunately, um, so it would be my boss, the, the owner of Adapt Prep MCAT, um, he's very on board with this philosophy of, hey, not only are we gonna help students do well in the MCAT, we're also going to help students who may be in a lower socioeconomic class be able to afford this competitive edge that some other individuals get. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where I was going with that, but. I'm, I'm happy yeah. that that is, like that has to be baked into the morals and yeah. ethics of the organization yeah. um, in order for other people to to actually reap the fruits of, of there's like there's so much research that points to the more and more that the investment of financial rewards go into production, into democratization, into making more economic degrees of freedom for other people, that yeah. the better a society is, right. and that the more that it goes into like hoarding and uh, and whatnot, the worse the society gets. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's, it's interesting that. It's, it's always been like that. History has always mm. been showing that principle. And so um, to have it baked into your morals and ethics that that is such a crucial investing back into the production to make it more available to more people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, you know, while, while this is just a microcosm of the big picture, right? We're helping students prep for the MCAT, but maybe so this is like dreaming big, right? Maybe we're also having an impact on healthcare as a whole, because if we can help 
or enable more students from a diverse background show that or demonstrate that they are ready for med school and that they're they're fully capable for and they've got that high MCAT score now, get them into healthcare. That diversity is gonna improve healthcare. Yeah. Um, we were yeah. talking about that at the beginning as well as that the more of the cultural and heritage that comes from around the world Absolutely. to solve some of these challenging problems, the more of these different philosophies and techniques that we can explore and pursue to actually come to solutions to the pressing Absolutely. problems. Yeah. And there's, there's some great books out there. The one that comes to mind, and I'm kicking myself because I can't remember the author, but it was the spirit catches, the spirit catches you and you fall down or the spirit catches me. And have you, have you heard of that? Um, one? I don't think so. Um, it's it's a fascinating book. I used to have my anatomy and physiology students read it, and because it brings in all these different facets from treating an individual. Yeah. Um, and it tells the real, the true story of this Hmong refugee family out in California, and how they were they had an epileptic daughter, and she went to receive medical treatment for her seizures. And, and the American medical approach was so different than the, the cultural heritage in yeah. treating this individual. You know, culturally, um, in the Hmong population, it, from my understanding anyways, is that at the time, epileptic individuals were, were seen or are seen as shaman, you know, very, yeah. very wise and spirit, yeah. something spiritually gifted. And so you don't necessarily want to end the seizures. Whereas from an American medical perspective, it's like, no, you have to be on all these different medications. Let's, you know, this is our goal. And so, so to see these two, dare I say, opposite kind of polar approaches mm -hmm. and how they butted heads. heads yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, that's, yep. the, that's the interdisciplinary understanding of medicine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and then that, a social yeah. worker comes into that exactly. picture. Um, and... And, and really, you know, she could see, it was an American social worker, so she could see the perspective, the cultural perspective of the American medical um, professionals, but then she got to know these people themselves. Um, and it ended up being, yeah, it's a fascinating story. I won't ruin the, the you, end of it. You, but you should ruin the end of it. Ruin, for us. ruin yeah. the end of it. And for you should you? teach us the end because so many people yeah. won't read it okay. or watch it. And so that's why I always say it's not even ruining, it's sharing so that. People can kind of like shortcut that. if they if they need if they need yeah, to yeah. yeah well I mean so it ended up being that this unfortunate I shouldn't say fortunately unfortunately this woman who was or this girl who was struggling with seizures had a grand mal seizure so so one that put her into a vegetative state and so now the medical professionals there's not much more they can do, do yeah and the family's approach was so optimal that this girl lived into, I think she was like 21, 22, maybe even older when she passed away. Mm. And the medical professionals were just blown away by that because a typical patient of theirs that had that same experience just lacks in the follow-up care from their family members or from the, you know, maybe the convalescence home that they get put into, mm. or, or I guess it wouldn't be convalescence at that point, but, um, that this woman's life was as long as it was because of the quality of care that her family gave her. And so, yeah. but, and you know, when she was still struggling with seizures, the hospital professionals were like, no, you guys are, excuse my language, idiots, what are you doing? Um, but they were caring for their daughter as best as they knew how. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, seeing, you read this book and, and at one point you're, ticked off at the medical professionals and at the other point you're ticked off at the you know the family and then you're you're ticked off at the infrastructure that is child protective services because they ended up taking this kid away from her parents um, and that's when she had her biggest seizure actually and so there's it's it's just this conglomeration of real life messiness yeah yeah the interdisciplinary approach, and that's something interesting for um, physicians as well that are going through the process of aspiring medical students to become doctors, because, what, and even for yeah, existing doctors, existing professors, existing students across basically any discipline, is that having a multidisciplinary approach to whatever we are practicing, it, it opens our perspective to yeah. adding in some of the, oh, well, what is the culture, this culture that is literally present in front of me, what, how do they yeah. feel about what's going on right now? Or, or what does 
someone of high or low SES or this religion or that religion or this skin color or that skin color. Why do those things matter mm -hmm. um, in, in building out a complex, nuanced perspective on every single Absolutely. issue around us? I'm glad you yeah. brought up that interdisciplinary because that's so important yeah. to, to, especially as you go to attempt to master the MCAT, mm -hmm. yep. what is so important is, again, that's why the, you added the psych and social. That's why yep. you're adding critical reasoning and analysis skills. Yeah, yeah. because you don't, you don't want a doctor, well, in my opinion anyways, mm -hmm. you don't want a doctor that absolutely, I mean, to some extent, follows the protocol to a T because that protocol isn't gonna fit every individual. Yep. So we really want to recruit people to the profession who, who know the protocol, but who are, you know, throw out adaptability again, right? Yeah. Who are adaptable enough that they can adapt to the situation, they can adapt to that person. Going back to you know the whole medical records and scribing and stuff like that, that, yeah. that doctor really needs to be in tune with who's in front of them in order to to fully grasp how to treat them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Maybe in the future on the on mastering the MCAT there will be a portion of like emotional intelligence where right. they'll have to like look at the different complex facial expressions. And, sure. Well, yeah. it's it's funny you say that because in the last 2 years and I don't know enough about this realm um, to, to speak maybe adequately about it, but there's a new test that health profession schools are requiring as part of their admittance test. I think it's called CASPA. Mm. First time I heard of it, I thought CASPER. Mm -hmm. No, maybe it is CASPER actually. CASPA might be the, the centralized application service for physician's assistant. So all these acronyms in my uh -huh, head. But there's so many. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So CASPER is this um, kind of this moral and ethical type test for individuals who are applying to PA school or I don't, a couple med schools that I know um, my students have applied to have used it as well. So they already are getting into that Whoa. of are you ethical? Um, how, and, and again, what does ethical mean, right? Yeah. Because there's no protocol for that. There's, there's a lot of different opinions on what is an ethical decision. Yeah. But our society's trying to create tests that will measure that. And again, that's where diversity is going to be so critical because you need that diverse input of what is ethical. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's, we we yeah. may be entering <laughs> like more like emotional intelligence and ethical intelligences in the decision making. I yeah. love hearing that because yeah. that's that creeping into our political and economic and scientific infrastructures is critical to, to prosperity. But again, it all depends on who's defining yeah. what's ethical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think in a very um, a, a strong collective intelligence mm -hmm. there is, is super important. Um, so what else, you know, closing out, what else yeah. should we know about mastering the MCAT that maybe that you've learned that adapt prep is providing? Like what else is really important that we may not have touched on? Hmm. You know, I've talked about it so much in so many different situations. I always forget what I've shared and what I haven't. But, um, you know, earlier when I mentioned the 80% versus 20%. Mm -hmm. So really learning about yourself to say, where do I need to put the effort in? Yeah. Um, kind of a side note tangent. When I first started with Adapt Prep MCAT, um, I, was, I was still wearing my professor hat a lot more. I actually wasn't even employed by... Adapt Prep MCAT. Mm -hmm. um, I did a survey of my students and also um, several hundred students throughout the United States and asked them different questions like, when do you know you're ready for the MCAT? And it blew me away because here are these people that are supposedly being trained as scientists and their answer was, the majority of them, I know I'm ready for the MCAT when I feel ready. And like that just blew yeah. me away a because I'm like, you guys yeah. are supposed to, you know, you, you've got some scientific training here and yeah. you're assessing whether you're ready for the MCAT based on a feeling. Yeah. Um, and so in that sense, this mastering the MCAT with Adapt Prep, with the software we're, we're developing and continue to develop, I'm, I'm hoping it's a confidence booster and it's yeah. kind of a, a data collector, right? It's... Yep. I'm ready for the MCAT when I score this high on the practice exam. Exactly. That's a good scientific reasoning. Right? And that's like, yeah. 
That's like if you come in really hot, like you know a lot about the subjects, yeah. then great. You may only need to study a hundred hours exactly. and you'll be ready. But yep. if you don't and you need more yeah. practice, you may study 400 hours, but then you're going to yeah. be at the same level of readiness as the yeah. person that only studied a hundred hours. Yeah. And yeah. it doesn't mean you're going to be any less of a doctor. Totally. It's just, you need to invest some more resources, resources. before you're ready yeah. for that next step. Exactly. Um, very interesting. And now that for me, that does kind of segue into what some of these other companies are doing that I've seen. Um, from my perspective, you'll take one of their practice exams and your result will score really low um, because they're trying to recruit you to buy their software and oh, their prep whoa. materials, right? It's like, oh yeah, you suck. You really need to buy this. Oh damn! It's kind of convincing you that you have acne when you have clear, <sighs> clear complexion. So there's all this working it's not ethical it's not yeah um and so with the with the software that we're running our our goal is to be ethical as far as based on how you're performing with our software this is where we've seen students end up scoring with the mcat now my software or i shouldn't say my software it's it's dr our, huffman's yeah. software mostly um, um Aside from my software, you know, I work with students all the time and they're, if they don't want to use Adapt Prep, my, my biggest piece of advice to them is go use AAMC resources. Mm -hmm. um, totally, totally not sponsored by AAMC, yeah. but I'm giving them a plug yeah. because they're the ones writing the MCAT and they don't really have any incentive to give you a lower score than you're going to be getting. Now, sometimes there are years where students will say, hey, those practice exams were a lot easier than the real thing. Yeah, yeah. But you hear that less than what you hear from these private for-profit companies. Yeah. So, yeah. Very, very interesting. We're all, all the way to the beginning of this last segment when you said that the having this like self-awareness of yeah. your own oh, abilities gosh. right and yeah. having a, a, a did i say that yeah you dang were, you, you make you, me sound good <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do here that's help awesome. people unleash themselves fully yeah. um you're no you nailed it that that having that that self-awareness of where we uh, need the mm. most developmental practice yeah. and then being able to leverage software to help us um uh, both analyze ourselves effectively to know where the, the where we need to study and then helping us actually do that study to yeah. get there is yeah. so critical I'm, I'm like my mind's going so yeah. many places about yeah. about like you know being able to even leverage tools like this for for our ability to learn about whatever subject we want is that you know closed loop yeah. feedback yeah. adaptive learning for three-year-olds 10-year-olds 20-year-olds oh, wherever absolutely. you're at well yeah. you know different um language apps i mean now we're going into the field of creating apps which yeah. maybe we should stay away from but you're right though but, I see where you're going but it's yeah. all there to you know to maximize our potential you know there's there's a lot of different angles we could take you know there's there's philosophies out there to say know your strengths and play work with your strengths and in other situations, yeah, work with your strengths, but also know where your weak, weaknesses are. Because yeah. you don't want to be blind to that. No blind spots. Yeah, no blind spots. Yeah. And at the very least, you can say, hey, I'm not good at that. Exactly. I'm going to bring someone on yeah. my team who is good at that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And the, another interesting thing that you, that you said was that you pointed out is like this, this super duper importance with uh, having an ethical groundedness in the product so yeah, that you're not, absolutely. you're not purposely trying to mislead people into thinking that they're yeah. scoring less in order to buy your product. Like that sounds, you know, those days are over. Those I days so. of, of, of this yeah. maximizing shareholder value and this business as usual yeah. with politicians, that shit's yeah. over. We're so over so. that stuff. Yeah. We are totally moving forth with more um, ethical, inclusive, equality of opportunity for all people, economic freedoms across the world, maximizing individual and collective potential. Yeah. We care about that so much. We talk yeah. about that a lot. So. But there's, and there's, I was going to say, there's a, there's a, such a, a hurdle that we still have to overcome, right? Because in order, I mean, even I'm not a business person by training. I kind of wish I took more business classes and marketing classes, but alas, nope. Um, Your Instagram account's pretty good. The, the, yeah, that's, the that's our, Adapt Prep Instagram. Yeah, our intern, kudos. Yeah. Shout you were running it though too. I was, yeah, yeah. I was. It was good. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and it's been fun to see how our intern Felipe has has really taken shout the out. baton there. Yeah, yeah shout Felipe. out to Felipe. Good work because the, yeah. oh, the link's in the bio, but the, that is oh, really yeah. strong. It's yeah. a really strong account. Yeah. You've got some Thank powerful you. quotes there. It's like, yeah. Yeah, but and, and to go back to your other point of yeah, we to to market ethically at a price, you know. Exactly. But to to keep living as a company and sustaining, and sustaining and growing. yourself and growing, yeah. yeah, and and getting out there and being known to people. That's what we enough face enough so well. that you can last. I think we that's face that same thing. That's the industry challenge. Artists right now. and entrepreneurs that are starting up Absolutely. face that same thing. It's like a huge challenge. Yeah, and doing it ethically. Even yeah. though having tremendous patience, because it's better to be super patient and do things mm. ethically yeah. um, than exploiting and um, trying to run really fast, and then you'll just your yeah. soul will be corrupted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where you know the the expression used to say, "Nice guys, we, we should gender neutralize it, right? Uh, nice people, people finish last." Yeah, yeah. And my my hope with this is that nice people or maybe we'll t switch it a little bit ethical people won't finish last that yeah we've we're hitting this point in culture and society where ethical nice people if you will be like are, are going to come to the forefront yeah yeah they'll be the people yeah. that w um help they're they're in many ways the ones that are opening this overton window to the possibilities of the most ethical grounds possible and moving yeah. other people to say look at how cool this is if we progress completely ethically together yeah. um, as one yeah and um, together's uh, together's together is a point yeah there's like a transition from survival of the fittest to survival mm. of the friendliest oh i like that, like that? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be good yeah yeah i'm glad you dig that one that's a that's good one awesome. that we learned as well Okay, couple quick power round thoughts on the way out. Um, we like to ask these questions to our guests on the show. Okay, uh-oh. Uh-oh, do you think we're <laughs> alone in the cosmos? Oh, man. You know, that is a great question. We won't know until we know, right? I mean, if you're, if you're in a room by yourself, are you alone in that room? Ooh. Yeah. What do you, what do you think? If you, well, I mean, unless there's, you're alone as far as being alone as a human being. Uh-huh. Yeah. But what else is then? There, is, there there, is there an energy force around us? What do you think? I, I, well, see, this is where I'm going to get in trouble with, with the people in my community <laughs> and maybe even my family. But I, I think there is this energy force around us that we haven't been able to measure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a legit thing. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, it's weird things like when my dad passed away a couple of years ago, we started seeing heart shapes. Mm. And I, I never would have like keyed into these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And so this is gonna get like really weird and maybe too sci-fi for you. Not but at all, we was, talk about this stuff all the time. Good deal, yeah. good deal. And that stuff's like, yeah. Um, and so I was on a hike at one point, I was volunteering with my son's Boy Scout troop and, and taking these kids on a hike. And I'm like, oh, this is something my dad would love. You know, being out in nature, he would always take the dog for a walk out in the trails where I grew up. So it really made me think of my dad and no joke, within seconds, I looked down on the ground and there's this heart shape. Well, it was an acorn split in half and it, it left that heart shape. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, there's, it's, there's something going yeah, on yeah. where maybe there's some messaging. My kids use it against yeah. me though, because we went to the, the Humane Society um, to look at potentially getting a cat and there was this oh it was the ugliest cat but it had hearts in its fur and they're like grandpa says we have to get this cat yeah and I'm like, what, what? Yeah. but sure enough there's <laughs> hearts in the cat so i've got another cat <laughs> you ended up adopting I, that cat yeah we did adopt Whoa. that cat even though you know i yeah. couldn't bring myself to pet it for like the first three weeks because you could feel every vertebrae in its back yeah. it was nasty yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. So, so I'm glad that you that think that. That communication, that energy force, kind of. There's, there's something out there. The, 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 yeah. the, when, when, when we limit our, 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 our 
I guess what we what we collectively believe to just what the perceptions mm. of this physical vehicle are yeah. that is limiting in so many ways that we're not enabling ourselves to see what exists beyond the perception right. of this vehicle yeah. and there are people that have been training the muscles of perceiving past the three-dimensional mm -hmm. reality that are really good yeah. at that yeah. and whatever exists out there is exciting I'm glad that you have had experiences in that um, and so yeah. that's why we ask yeah do you think this is a simulation oh like that what is that one show that movie where it's like cameras and everybody's just the Truman Tru show? it is the yeah. Truman show right is it, that the kind of simulation you're asking about <laughs> but there's a lot of different ways to take okay. this question I was yeah. gonna say is this where yeah. like the behind the scenes people come out that have been following my life like, yeah. and say surprise <laughs> this has been all uh, yeah. just uh, Jerks. Jerks, <laughs> you know, yeah. who wrote the script sure. during this year to this year because yeah, yeah. that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever watched Battlestar Galactica? Yeah. Yeah. So that kind of that things are on repeat. Mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes, sometimes, like, I would buy into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are, are we going to be on repeat until we actually do a good job of what we're supposed to do yeah. as, as the human race? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yep. That that's a, that's an option that you know this between the spark of life and the spark of death. You, yeah. That what exists on the other side of that yeah. is maybe just the cycle of potentially reincarnation into different yeah. planets, orbiting stars, or the same one or, until or recycling back into recycling. the same one. There's yeah. a lot of people lot. that would get mad at me for saying that, but in well, the same sense, we're saying sense, potentials. Potentially, yeah. 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 I mean, you look at laws of thermodynamics, right? Energy mm. can neither be created nor destroyed, and I'd like to think I have energy, mm -hmm. more so on some days than others, mm -hmm. but if my energy can neither be created nor destroyed, when my physical body dies, what happens to my energy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Potentially just buried into the, I don't know. the dirt. Maybe, potentially, potentially. And then, absolutely. And then you grow trees that have fruit right? and so et cetera. In and that yes, sense, yeah. my energy transfers into transfer. a different form. True, and it may yeah. not need to be like a soul that transfers, but a yeah. tree it transfers into yeah. a tree. Um, and last question is, what okay. do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Oh, hmm. Visually or energy wise? You get to I choose. Get, I get to choose. Oh, there's so, my mind's like buzzing on that one. My, my first, my first thing that I went to is more, maybe it was because I watched that empathy mm -hmm. vi video that, Shout out to David have. Savage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was empath. it 131 yeah. or something? Yeah, yeah. Some, anyways. We've had him twice on the show. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. But in my life, I would say empathy has been huge. Yeah. And so there's a beauty in Beautiful. empathy. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe it goes back to the MCAT stuff too. Yeah. Of empathizing with individuals. I promise you I didn't plan this. This isn't scripted, but this is where my mind's going. Mm -hmm. Um Empathy with individuals who want to become medical professionals and, and having that empathy for them and maybe, you know, being able to connect with those people. I think that's, that's pretty beautiful. Yeah. Like seeing people where they're at and, yeah. and what they're feeling and coming alongside with them. So it's not yeah. really a visual beauty thing. It's, it's more of a, an emotional. I agree with you. Totally yeah. agree with yeah. you on that one. That's yeah. such a powerful one. Knowing how to get behind the eyes of another completely yeah. in a genuine, loving, caring way. Yeah. And then it also doesn't surprise me that you pick that because you yourself are professing all the time. So you're trying to help yeah. students gain, you're trying to empathize with them at their level to help them yeah. gain the augmentation of perception. And then yeah. also with the um, physicians, it's not only about meeting them where they're at so they can learn to become a physician, but also it's learning for them to empathize with their patients so that the for patients... For them to learn empathy exactly. too. That would be they a good MCAT section. Are you empathetic? That's what we were saying earlier. Yeah. Is I think yeah. we may be moving to potentially move into that. Yeah. This awesome. has been such a pleasure, yeah. Elizabeth. Thank you Thank for coming Thank you. This wasn't as show. scary as I thought it would be. Yeah. See, see, boom, there we yeah. go. We, you, we this was it. fun, good. actually. I was kind of nervous about this, I'm not going to lie. Um, but no, this was good. Good. Thank you for good. asking great questions. May we, may we ask you, like, what was, like, what was the thing that was, like, making you nervous, and then what ended up being this experience that made it not nervous mm, for you? Yeah. You know, 
oh man, people watching it might think, wow, she's just insecure. I think there's, there's always this humble insecurity in me of, do I have anything worth saying? Like, are, is there gonna be value in what I'm transferring? Um, so I think the fear is always there of, I want there to be value in what I'm transferring. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 So what made it okay? I, you know, it's kind of some mental speak, you know, that inner coach in my head of, you can do this. Let's go. You want to just, just be yourself. Yeah. Um, go with what you know. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Good. So it was, it was good. 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 Yeah. I'm glad Thank that. You. Yeah. Good. I'm, and that's a really important moment for, for others to hopefully take from this mm. experience is that you gain this sort of, you know, everyone sort of has that, that, that feeling yeah. of like, what's well, imposter nervous, I'm, syndrome, right? Yeah. 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 That, yeah. And then, and then being able to go through the process of, of, of learning how to crush it, like learning yeah. how to be confident in your own shoes and yeah. disseminate your wisdoms to, to other people in the world. And then just making it really clear for, you know, on my end as well for, for those interested is that, you know, we're talking about, you know, empathy being so important is that, yeah. you know, when you're always trying to relate to the person that is nervous, that is, that is, you know, mm. uh, showing them that you love them and care about them, that you genuinely yeah. want them to succeed and that I'm here to, to help you unleash your soul to the fullest to the world. And that is my role. And so, you know, when that from yeah. even messaging to first meeting, to talking to everything until now, that, that is, that is the, that's the flow of things from yeah. my end to the individuals that we get the pleasure to sit down with so yeah, that's awesome and it was real yeah you know because sometimes you have people that they've got an agenda and they check off the list yeah but this this was it, it yeah thank it you it was real thank so you i appreciate you're that. real you're awesome i try I there's nothing else i can be this is yeah this has been such a pleasure <laughs> hey, thank, thank you. you for coming on yeah. to the show thanks for teaching us about mastering the mcat there's so yeah. much nuance here go check out the links below everyone um, check out the dev prep link below yeah. and go explore it. Share it with other people for 200 bucks. Get a really robust way to, to train yourself to, for the, on the MCAT and share it with other people around the U.S. and Canada and even around the world so that people around the world can learn about what it's actually potentially like to do an adaptive um, MCAT training process and mm. bring that to other places. And shout out to all you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Give us your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Also, go and build the future. Manifest your destiny into the world, everyone. We love you. Let's rebirth the public intellectual together. Inspire the next generation to build the future. Much love. We will see you soon. Peace. Awesome. Yay. Yay. That was cool. That's it. Yay.